Hello everybody! In this video, I'm going to introduce you to a fantastic tool for those of you who want to manage a Valheim server or make your own server that other people play on. If you've just started playing the game, I really encourage you to just play the game, keep exploring, and keep exploring until it's boring to you. Let's just show you how it works exactly. First, you put in a seed. I'm going to use my name, Jack Pittman and then you click go. At this point, it basically makes the world and then shows you the map. And depending on what you want to show up, you can select things like the bosses, trader locations, all that kind of thing. Now, I don't think that it's good to play and refer to this while you play. I find that it really ruins the immersion. However, it is really, really fun to use this tool to look for specific circumstances in Valheim worlds that you think could make a really fun experience, right? So let me show you an example of that. There's a uh, seed I like to use called Hasib. Sometimes I just want to be on a really big continent that I can make a base on and know land connects me to every possible thing I could need, even if it's really, really far away. And I like making long paths and that kind of thing. So this world, Seed Hasib, we can see that there is this huge continent here. And I really like playing on this continent because it's, it's great once you're more experienced with Valheim. You're looking for something more challenging. It's got plenty of mistland space, plenty of plains, and I, our base is actually right here. So we're still getting nerfed by mistland stuff, so not doing that. But we've been doing plains and doing that kind of thing, and it has been a blast. Really loved it. And this tool was really useful for me to look for land that's big enough to know that when I make a base there, it's gonna last a really long time. Because I don't know about you guys, but making a base and then just abandoning it for a new one, it's kind of disheartening, you know? It's cool when, when something gets used a bunch before it gets destroyed or abandoned. I, I just love it when you make something and people actually use it. So using this world exploration tool is a fantastic way to do that. Now, let's imagine that we're looking for a mountain experience, you know? We want to make a mountain base with our friends in a really big mountain where there's a bunch of frost caves. Don't need to use the map to find the frost caves because the fun is in kind of finding it, but you know, it's more fun when you know it's going to be there. I don't know if any of you have ever found a little patch of mountain, gotten all excited, started making your base, and then you realize that your huge-ass mountain was just some little, little nipple like this. You know, that's what you want. No, that's not what you want. You want something like, you know, a proper mountain. Like, that's kind of a proper mountain. Not all mountains are created equal. So, of these three, let's look, this one here, this one here, and this one here, the one with the most exploration, I already know just by looking, is this one. Because these dark areas indicate height and sheerness, and not as many things spawn in those areas. They're also not really fun to explore. So this mountain may look big, but it's actually pretty lame, because it's really only just this part here. Now, this is all just going off of the visuals, right? So we can find our spot and know, okay, when I make this server, there's going to be this area there. I can head north from the spawn and then go around and I'll find the, the landmass, right? But what if we want more details? Well, we can actually load basically any location onto the map but it won't start with them that way. And I like that because I don't want to know every single thing. I want to have mystery and this kind of stuff. But it is cool to find like the, the mountain on your map that has the most frost caves, for example. So let's enable the frost caves and figure that out. We can see that this one has five. This one has six. This one has five. Do we have any mountain ranges with seven, I wonder? Whoa, this one's really good. I wouldn't expect that at all. Huh, 
Isn't that crazy? This is so close to the the start there, but it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frost caves in one shortish mountain range. And that's how you can use this tool. You can use it to know what conditions exist and then adventure out with your buddies to go and find them. It's a fantastic tool for those of you who are setting up servers or trying to get more out of your Valheim experience once you're a couple hundred hours into it. Now, how would you actually upload your own world? Let's say you want to look at the map of an existing server and you don't know what the seed is because the seed is normally going to be kind of kept from you just so that it's harder for you to look at a map of the server. So you're not always going to be able to find it. But if you have the world, like it, you're, you've been making the Valheim world on your own computer, you're not joining a server, then you can actually just upload your world by using this upload word world instructions here. And then all you do is locate your FWL and DB file, and then you can open them. This, for example, is about to load a, a really cool Valheim mod that's actually like a single player experience, and it has a really, really, really long path, basically. And so I just downloaded the mod and uploaded it to Valheim map. And then you can look at the seed that the mod or the ye old map experience is created on. And this, I can tell just by looking at it, is an old world spawn. So this was made before the Mistlands actually became updated. Uh, maybe in like the skull and spiderwebs era or in the blank era, but definitely not in the modern era. And if you want to learn about the differences between modern mistlands and previously spawned mistlands to figure out if you want to change your server or start a new one, then check out this video. It's all about the differences between the old Valheim mistlands world gen and the new one. And if you want anything else, check out my other videos. You can always set up a dedicated your server yourself by looking at my tutorial that explains everything you need to do to play with your friends and mess around with other people. Valheim is a really good multiplayer experience. And if you've gotten tired of the single player, there's a whole world out there of crazy, chaotic, fascinating things that you can experience in this beauty of a game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.